Welcome back to our series where we're covering all the important economic data releases from the monthly cycle that affect the markets. We're looking at what each of them are, how they relate to each other, and how we can use them to help us with our trading or investing. This time, we're taking a look at the Philadelphia Fed Survey, also known as the Philly Fed Survey, or more formally, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank's Manufacturing Business Outlook Survey. That's a bit of a mouthful. This obviously focuses on the US manufacturing situation. A lot of people think that the heyday of US manufacturing is long over, but that isn't the case. Contrary to popular belief, US manufacturing is still massive. The US is the world's second largest manufacturer behind China, or third largest if you count the EU as a whole. So based on this, let's start by taking a look at why manufacturing data is important. Manufacturing accounts for around 11% of the US economy and almost 8.5% of the payrolls in NFP employment. Now, although manufacturing may only account for 11% of GDP in the US, it does create demand for goods and services in other sectors that aren't accounted for in the manufacturing numbers when looking at GDP. One study showed that in 2013, manufacturing generated $2.1 trillion in GDP but broader measures actually put that closer to $6 trillion, almost three times as much. It's a similar story with employment. Once again in 2013, around 12 million people were directly employed in manufacturing, but as a whole, the manufacturing sector actually supports the further 17 million people who were indirectly employed. So although manufacturing isn't as important to the US economy as the services sector, it still plays a very important role, and the data will give us a very good sign about how the economy is doing. The Philadelphia Fed Survey is a monthly survey sent to businesses, and the responses help us to gauge manufacturing conditions across the US. The survey itself is voluntary. The participants are asked a range of questions that relate to changes in employment, orders, and prices, so therefore, it helps us to understand how the sector is doing and whether things like inflation or employment are experiencing any sort of issues. As well as current conditions, the survey also asks participants about their outlook for the next six months, which gives a short-term forecast of manufacturing conditions. If the data release comes in above zero, that's positive and shows that manufacturing is growing, which should lead to higher economic growth. However, a reading below zero shows manufacturing is in contraction, and that could result in lower economic growth. Now, this survey only covers a few areas in northeastern states, and only surveys around 250 businesses. So that does mean it only represents a relatively small portion of US manufacturing, and so it doesn't carry the same weight as some of the other manufacturing data releases. But since it's released during the month itself, compared to other releases which are released the month after reporting on the previous month, that makes it one of the earliest manufacturing data releases that we can take a look at. So it could be a good insight into what those other releases may eventually show and could give an indication of early signs about problems developing. So it could be a bit of an early warning sign there. Now, if you've been following this series so far, that might sound similar to our previous video on the IBD Economic Optimism Index, which is also used as an early indication. So if you haven't seen that video yet, click here to watch that one. Hit the thumbs up button if you find this series helpful and interesting. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future ones. And I'll see you in the next one next week. Take care.